The purpose of this video is to introduce us to the idea of free body diagrams. What a free body diagram is, is a way to visualize an object, whatever motion it's occurring, and the forces that are acting upon it to cause this motion. So we will look at our first example right here, which is a coffee mug. Now this coffee mug right here is at rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to represent this with, with a box. Okay. Now if we know the mass, we're going to write the mass in here. Other websites will teach you to use a dot. That works as well. I'm just going to keep it simple and call it a box. Now we know this object is on Earth. Therefore, we're going to represent it by saying that we have a force of gravity acting downwards. Now in other courses, it's important how long you put the arrow. For the purposes of this class, we're not going to worry about that. We're simply just going to have an arrow and have it represent force gravity. Now also, you also notice that above the force gravity, we have a little half arrow. This little half arrow indicates that this is a vector, because when we're looking at forces, the direction is important. Now we have force gravity acting downwards, so in theory this object should be accelerating downwards right now because the unbalanced force is downward. But we can see it's an object at rest. Therefore there has to be some opposing force. In this particular case, this force is caused from the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an opposite force here. We're going to call this the force normal. Now the force normal in this case indicates that it is working in the opposite direction, it is preventing this object from accelerating downwards. For our next object here, this is where we're going to call, have a force applied. Now what I've done in this case is I have an animation here on the left. And we can see that this person here is pulling on the object. So let's draw out what this is going to be. Yet again, what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with a box. Okay, We know that this is on Earth, so therefore we're going to have a force gravity. We can see it's sitting on a surface, so therefore it's going to be perpendicular to that surface is our force normal. Now we see our object right here is our person is pulling. This pulling indicates that we've got a force applied, which we'll represent with Fa. Now we can see from the animation, this object wasn't moving. Therefore, there had to be a force to counteract the force applied. In this particular case, it is going to be force friction, which we'll represent with FF with a half arrow. Now in our next example here, what we've got is we've got another person trying to move a box. This box this time is going to be moving. So the question is, how is this going to change our free body diagram? Well, it's actually not going to change it at all. So although the pushing was occurring on the right, that's not where we're going to put our force applied, because ultimately the force applied was occurring in this direction. So although they were pushing from over here, the force applied occurs on the left. However, the object wasn't going it did have force friction. As we can see, there was a struggle there. Therefore, what you'll see is although there's an acceleration to the right, this was due to the counter, the net force between our force applied and our force friction. Yet again, it's on a surface, so we've got a force gravity, and we've also got a force normal. So in our next example here, what we're going to have is a rocket going up in the air. So what are the forces in this particular case? Well, we're going to yet again draw our box right here. In that animation, we didn't see any movement to the left or right. So therefore, we're not going to have, since there's no acceleration occurring left or right, we're not going to put any forces. We know there's going to be force gravity pointing downwards because this object is still on Earth. Where is our force normal? The answer is there is no force normal. A force normal only occurs if you're on a surface. In this particular case, we've got a rocket booster. Now, although you'll see the rocket booster is here at the bottom of the rocket, we're going to indicate that as our force applied pushing upwards. Once an object leaves the ground, no force uh, normal. In this case, there's just a force applied. And although the rocket's downwards, the force applied is upwards. For our next example here, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this baseball player as they try to slide into base. And what would that look like? So we're focusing on this last few seconds here when they start to slide. So how is that going to look? Well, in this particular case, regardless of which one we look at, we've still got our person, and we've got our force gravity, and we've got our force normal.
Now, when that person is running, they're running towards first base. And while they're running, there is a force applied. Now, of course, they're going to be because they're not accelerating out of control, there has to be a force friction. Now, when they're sliding, however, this force applied no longer exists. Why is that? Because your feet are the things that were pushing you forward. If a person's just sliding into the home base, there's nothing that's causing them to accelerate, they're just decelerating. In our next video here, we have a child sliding down a railing. So what is that going to look like? Well, in this particular case, we're going to represent the child on a ramp as so. Which way is gravity acting? Well, gravity is going to be acting this way. We're going to have our force gravity. Now, in this particular case, gravity is doing one of, it's doing two things at the same time. What you'll see is we've got our force gravity, which I'm going to call perpendicular in this case, because you'll see it's perpendicular to the surface that the person's sliding down. In this case, this is the part of force of gravity that's holding the child onto the railing. But you'll see the child is not accelerating off the railing either. He's just staying on the railing. Therefore, we are going to be having our force normal on an angle as so. You'll also notice that the child is sliding down the railing. Therefore, it's also gravity that's pulling him down the railing. And we're going to call this force gravity parallel. And what you'll notice is that this is a 90 degree angle between perpendicular and parallel. So basically what we've got is we've got our force gravity parallel, the part, the component of force gravity that's pulling down the slide or pulling them down the railing. And then you've got force gravity perpendicular. This is what's keeping the child on the railing. And then lastly, of course, we would have force friction. Now, force friction is going to run parallel to the surface that you're rubbing. Therefore, it's going to be going the same way as the railing. In this video right here, it's similar to our previous example, except this time what the person is going to be doing is they're going to be pushing up the ramp. So, what are our forces going to look like in this case? Well, we're going to have a ramp like so. Okay. And yet again, force gravity is going to be pushing downwards. And we know that part of this gravity, we'll call a component of it, force gravity perpendicular, is keeping it on the surface so it doesn't accelerate up or down, which means therefore there is a force normal opposing that force. We also know that there's a little bit of gravity that is going to try to make this slide down the ramp. Now in this particular case, you can see the person is pushing up the ramp. Therefore, the force applied is upwards. We're not moving it successfully, however. Therefore, in what direction does force friction have to be? Force friction is going to be in this direction, preventing the motion. Our last object is going to be a projectile. So in this particular case, it's going to be a bouncy or a soccer ball in the air. Now, when that soccer ball is in the air, what does our free body diagram look like? Well, if you remember from our previous unit when we talked about projectile motion, once an object has been kicked or thrown or whatever it is, there are no longer any horizontal forces on it. And if an object's in the air, there can't be any normal force on it either. Therefore, the only force that's going to be affecting this soccer ball through the air is just force gravity.